and welcome back to Expert Guides YouTube channel. So my name is Rella Pilishana and you can call me Rels or Mam Rels. So I will be your teacher for today's mini lecture. So I am a teacher for Mathematics 1, but just to give you a little background about myself, let me go ahead and introduce myself further, okay? So as I've mentioned, this is my name and I am a graduate of BS Electronics Engineer from Bataan Peninsula State University and also a DOSC Scholar under RA7687 from 2015 up to 2020. So I have been a former executive auditor as well as a program speaker for our, our university volunteerism organization, which is the Palangay Bayani, from 2015 to 2017. And during the summers of 2017 up to 2018, I have experienced being an elementary school tutor as well as a helper for a city festival. Now, um, during my internships on June 3 up to August 6, 2019, I have took that up from our in Texas Instrument Park, Pampanga, under the position of QFN Assembly Process Engineer. Now, enough about me, though. Uh, let's talk about our lesson. So uh, before this, we had the previous lessons regarding imaginary numbers as well as radicals. Now, for today, we will be talking all about factoring polynomials. Okay, so with regards to factoring polynomials, the first thing that we take note is to get the common monomial factor. So the common monomial factors is similar to getting the uh, common um, factor, for example, or the greatest common factor. But this involves, but the CMF involves uh, getting the um, common variables. For example, we have polynomial 24, x raised to 6 plus 32, x raised to 5 minus 20, x raised to 4. Now, regarding the numerical coefficients 24, 32, and 20, we know that it has the greatest common factor, which is 4. So we can factor that out. Now, with regards to the variables, we can also factor out x raised to 4. So therefore, 4 times x raised to 4, this is our CMF. And this will be the polynomial that stays behind. Now, after getting the CMF, we can now use techniques to factor out this polynomial. So the first technique that we have to take note is when the numerical coefficient of our leading term, x squared, for with regards to factoring polynomials, it's equal to 1. So therefore, a here is equal to 1. So m times n, that would be equal to C and M or the product of M plus N is equal to B. Therefore, we can just answer the statement of what are the two factors of C which give a sum of B. So for example, we have C is equal to 15 and then B is equal to 8, for example. So what are the factors of 15 that will give us a sum of 8? So for example, that would be 5 and 3, right? So 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, but 5 times 3 is equal to 15. So let's have an example for this one. So we have to factor out the polynomial x squared minus 4x minus 21. So we have to take note of negative 21 or the factors of negative 21 that will give us a, prod a sum, sorry, a sum of negative 4. So with regards to 21, we have negative 7 and positive 3. So we have to take note here that the larger factor, which is 7, so the sign here follows the sign of the middle term. Therefore, this is negative 7. So between the factors of 21, which are 7 and 3, the larger factor 7 follows the sign of the middle term, which is negative 4. Therefore, we have factors x minus 7 and x plus 3. Now, what if what if the numerical coefficient of our leading term, x squared, is not equal to 1? So we can uh, denote that through the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where we have a here is the product of m times p, b is the sum of the products m times p, I'm sorry, m times q, and n times p, and c is the product of n times q. So by trial method, we can consider our factors of a and c and check b using the FOIL method of multiplying binomials. So let's go ahead with an example to better understand this. So we have to factor out 6x squared 
minus 5x minus 6. So for this one, I will be teaching you two techniques that we can use to factor this out. So for example, we have uh, 6x squared, right? We have a, b, and c for the numerical coefficients. So the first technique is when we require or we can use um, a solution or we need a solution for this. So if we have the product AC, which will be six times negative six, so that would be negative 36. And the sum is the numerical coefficient of our middle term will be negative five. So what are um, the possible factors of negative 36 that will have a result of negative five? So is it a 36 and one? Is it negative 18 and two? Is it negative 12 and three? Or maybe is it's negative uh, nine and four? So yes, it's actually negative nine and four. So note here again, the, between the factors of 36, we have the larger uh, factor, which is nine. So nine follows the uh, sign of the middle term, which is negative five. Therefore, we have negative nine and four. Now proceeding to this one, we can multiply the two factors, negative nine and positive four, by the variable of the middle term, which is x. Therefore, 5x can be substituted with 4x and negative 9x, and we can just separate them. By separating them, we can proceed to factoring by grouping. How do we do so? So let's look first to 6x squared plus 4x. So we can get the CMF for this one. We can factor out 2x, and the remaining uh, quantity would be 3x plus 2. Now, on the other side, we can factor out negative 3, and that would give us 3x plus 2. But hold on. Look here. We have both 3x plus 2 on both sides. Now, going by factoring or intersection, we can just write down 3x plus 2, since it's the same, and then rewrite 2x minus 3 as the other uh, factor. Therefore, 3x plus 2 multiplied by quantity, 2x minus 3, these are the factors of this polynomial. Now let me teach you the other uh, technique that we have. So for this one, as we can recall, we have the AC product negative 36, a sum of negative 5, and factors negative 9 and 4. For this one, we note negative 9 as factor A, and 4, or positive 4, as factor B. Now we have to divide the factors by letter C here, which is negative six. So the numerator will be the first term and the denominator would be the last term. So the same goes with the second factor. We also divide it by uh, the C or letter C. For example, we have negative nine and positive four. So we divide both of them with negative six. So the first one here, by simplifying it, we have three over two. So the negative sign is canceled and what we're left is three over two. On the other hand, for factor four, we have positive two and the one in the denominator, we have negative three. So as we've mentioned, the numerator will be the first term. Therefore, the first term is three X, noting by our uh, equation or the polynomial. And then the denominator is the last term. Since it's positive, it's plus two. So this is the first factor. And here we note, 2, the numerator will be 2x. And given a denominator of negative 3, we have minus 3. So this is the second uh, factor that we have. So this is the same uh, factors of the polynomial that we're given, or the same answer that we obtained before. So let's go ahead and give another example. So how about you try and answer this one? So we have 2y squared minus 9x. I'm sorry, that's 2y squared minus 9y minus 5. Okay, so for this one, let's go ahead with the first technique that I've taught you. So doing so, we have a product of uh, AC, which is negative 10, that gives a sum of negative 9. So this one, we have factors negative 10 and 1. So negative 10, the bigger factor, follows the sign of the middle term, which is negative 9. And doing so, substitute the factors in the middle term. Therefore, we have 9y, which is substituted by a plus 1y and negative 10y. We separate them for factoring by grouping, and then we obtain the common monomial factors for each of them. So 2y squared plus y, we we're left with the uh, quantity 2y plus 1. On the other hand, we factor out negative 5 here, and we're left with 2y plus 1. 
So rewrite 2y plus 1 multiplied by factor or quantity y minus 5. So this is our answer. Now on the other hand, we can also go about with the same method. Now we have negative 10, the first factor, and positive 1. So we divide both sides by c, which is negative 5. This one becomes a whole number, which is 2. So we can just put 1 at its denominator. Now this one, this can't be simplified any longer because this is the simplest um, form that it has. Therefore, uh, this one we have 2y according to the numerator and the denominator is 1, therefore it's plus 1. So this is our first factor. And here we have y, since it's just 1, minus 5. So this is our second factor. So it's the same answer as before. Now, we also have a special trinomial such as uh, the perfect square trinomial, for example. So we have x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. If we or if you notice this one, that the uh, first term and the last term of the trinomials are perfect squares, and the product of the first term and last term times two, uh, you can directly get this one. This form will be x or quantity x plus y uh, squared. Now, for example, we have x squared minus 8x plus 16. So for this one, we have one, which is also a perfect square, and 16 is also perfect square, right? It's a perfect square for four. So four times one times two is equal to eight. Therefore, this is a perfect square uh, trinomial. So one way to know uh, is to divide this middle term coefficient eight by two and then square it. So that's another method to check if the polynomial or trinomial is a perfect square or PST. So for this one, Let's proceed. This one is equal to x minus 4 squared. Why? Because if you notice here, it's negative. Therefore, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And the square of negative 4 is positive 16. So this is negative. Therefore, this is our answer. x minus 4 raised to. Now, we also have uh, factoring for binomials. Now, for example, we have the difference of two squares. So this is one of my favorites, per se, because it's the easier one to remember. You have to, you just have to make sure that the first term and the last term are squares, are perfect squares, and they have the minus sign in between them. So what you can do is rewrite x and y, and the first factor has plus or positive, and the second one has minus or negative y. So this is the difference of two squares. For example, we have 4a squared minus 49b squared. So we both know that the two of them or the two terms are perfect squares. Therefore, we can just write the uh, square. Square root of this one is 2a and the square root of this one should be 7b. Therefore, we have a 2a minus 7b and 2a plus 7b. So this is the answer. Now, we also have a sum of two cubes and the difference of two cubes. So what we're going to do first with the sum of two cubes is you have to take note x plus y here. So we have to just rewrite x plus y, follow the sign of the given, and then rewrite it as x squared minus xy plus y squared. So note here that the sign of our middle term is the opposite of the sign that's given here, or the opposite sign of the first factor. But the third term is always positive. That's, the same thing goes for the difference of two cubes. So this one is also positive. But the middle term sign is the opposite of the first or the given. Therefore, this is or how we factor out the sum and the difference of two cubes. So for example, we have the polynomial d cubed minus 64c. So this is what? This is the difference of two cubes. So what is the cube root of b cubed? That's b. And this one, 64c raised to 9, that would be for, uh, c, for c cubed, right? So we just have to copy paste 
the uh, cube roots of this one with the same sign. So that would be B minus 4C cubed. And then have the polynomial here, which would be B squared or the square of this multiplied by X and Y or the first term with the opposite sign. That would be negative and this would be positive. So positive, this is the opposite of this sign. Therefore, we have 4BC cubed for the middle term and the positive square of this one will be 16C raised to 6. So this is our final answer. So uh, what's the use of um, factoring, by the way, right? So we have also an application for factoring. So by simplifying rational algebraic expressions or dividing um, polynomials, we can simplify terms just like this one. For example, we have um, an exam question that states to simplify this. So we get first the factor of 6x squared plus 4x minus 10. As well as on the bottom, as you've noticed in the denominator, we have x squared minus 1, which is e. This is a difference of two squares. So therefore, we have or we take out the common monomial factor, which is 2. And then here, the, our difference of two uh, squares. And then further factoring this polynomial, we can have 3x plus 5 multiplied by x or quantity x minus 1. So therefore, we can cancel the similar terms in the numerator and the denominator. What's left behind is 2 over x plus 1. So this is our final answer. Now about this one. Let's try and answer this one. So we are given this expression. So what's the first thing that we can do? So we have to factor out uh, this uh, polynomials, except for x minus 1, because this is already simplified. So this one is the difference of two cubes. And this two, we can uh, factor out. So x squared plus 2x minus 3. This will give us x plus 3 multiplied by quantity x minus 1, because negative 3 has factors 3 and 1 but it should give us a sum of 2. So therefore, that's positive 3 and negative 1. So x squared, as this is the difference of two, uh, two squares, we have x minus 2 and x plus 2. So here we are. So for this one, we have negative 6. So negative 6 has uh, factors that will provide it or give it a sum of positive 1. So that's positive 3 and negative 2. So copy-paste x minus 1. So let's cancel um, the similar terms that we have in the numerator and denominator. So therefore, the answer to this expression is x plus 2. So up next, we will be talking all about polynomial functions. So if you have any questions or if you want to learn more with us, uh, please feel free to give us a call. Or if you have any increase, just please give us a call or a text whenever you're free or whenever uh, you want. So we provide enrichment programs as well as online review services for college entrance examinations. So our program covers math, science, English, or Filipino. We also offer 112 hours of intensive review, series of speed tests, career orientation, and a refresher class. So this will be our schedules from the first batch up to eight. So our first batch and second batch starts on May 10. So if you want to place your reservations, please give us a call. All right, thank you. Uh, if you want to uh, be updated as well with our uh, YouTube channel, please give us a like and subscribe down below. All right, thank you.